Howdy ho there friends and neighbors, Bobby here today. Today we will be working on a 2001 Ford F-150 pickup truck and we will be installing brand new spark plugs. So let's get started. Okay friends, first thing we're going to do is take our valve core tool and we're going to go ahead and pull the valve core out of the front tires and out of both of them. And that's going to help lower our truck about four to six inches. And that'll make it a little bit easier crawling over the fender to replace these plugs. First thing we're going to do is take this little plastic cover off. There's two 10 millimeter headed bolts over here and one on the other side. So we're going to pull all three of those and get this cover out of the way. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and pull this whole air tube assembly off of here. I'm going to flip this lever right here. I'm going to unplug this connector and take an 8 millimeter uh, socket. I will loosen. Uh, this clamp right here, pull these two hoses off right here on the side, and underneath here we do have a connector for a mass airflow sensor. As you can see, here's the wire right here, here's the connector. We're going to go ahead and unplug that. So we're going to go ahead and pull all this off and get it out of our way. Now our final connector here to the mass airflow sensor, we're going to pull that loose. And friends, this actually is um, connected underneath here to a metal bracket that you might have to pry loose first. Next, we're gonna go ahead and pull this power steering reservoir out of the way. There's one, two, three bolts holding it in place, and we're just gonna remove them and lay it out of the way. Okay, now I'm gonna take these three bolts out that hold this little bracket in place and remove it. Okay, folks, we're gonna go ahead and start removing these coil packs here. There's four on this side. This is bank two on the engine, so this is cylinder five, six, seven, and eight on further back there that you can't really see. We're gonna take a, each one of these cool backs is held with a seven millimeter headed bolt. We're gonna remove that on each one and remove them. And we're gonna disconnect our uh, connector to the coil pack. And so let's get started on that. Okay, and I'm just using a uh, quarter inch drive seven millimeter socket with a little swivel down there and we'll use that hopefully on all of these. Okay friends, we unplug the connector and there's just a little push tab on the bottom of there and we're gonna go and just lift the coil pack out. Now we're gonna continue on and get all these coil packs out of here and then we'll show you how to replace the plugs. Okay folks, we got all the coil packs removed on the driver's side. We're over here on the passenger side and we're gonna do the same thing. Remove these one by one. Hey friends, one little quick tip here on the passenger side. I've already taken the first two coils out. I'm gonna remove this PCV valve and just lay this hose and valve out of my way. Just probably just kind of lay it right on the other side of this little heater hose right here. And that, that'll gain me a little bit more access for these last two. Okay folks, we have all the coil packs removed at this time. It's time to go ahead and start replacing some plugs. So the first thing we wanna do, bring the camera right down here. And you'll notice on this vehicle, there's an emission label and it tells you right here that the spark plug gap is 52 to 56 thousandths of an inch. If you can't find that on your vehicle, you might be able to uh, contact your local parts house and they should be able to give you that information, especially the, the one that you purchased your plugs from. First thing we're gonna do is go ahead and unbox all of our spark plugs and then we will check that gap on them. Okay, folks, we have this little spark plug check gapper tool here, and you can pick these up at any parts store. Looks like I picked this one up at AutoZone at some point. Um, and all you do is stick your stick the tool in between the electrode, and you slide it over until it stops. And right there, it looks like we're about 56 thousandths on that plug. So we're going to go through here, and we're going to check all these plugs and make sure they're all the same gap. And as long as they're within that specified range, I'm good to go with that. Okay, friends, we found a couple plugs here that the gap was just a little bit larger than I like. So what we're gonna do is just find you a little metal surface here. We're just gonna use this pair of line pliers here. And we're gonna just slip, simply tap very lightly on the plug. And it looks like we've gotta tap just a little bit more. And then we should have this about where we, uh, one more time. Okay, and that right there is about where I had all the other ones set up. The next thing we wanna do to each one of these spark plugs is take a little bit of anti-seize 
and install some on the threads. Now don't go too crazy with this, okay? About like that is about all you really need. And don't bring it all the way to the end where the first couple threads are, or you'll end up possibly getting some down here on the electrode and you might have a misfire. But just like that, that's about all you really need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and coat all the rest of them and we'll be ready to start removing the plugs and replacing them. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start replacing the plugs on this side. And what, friends, I've already, I got my little air blower here. And in each bore, I'm gonna start with the uh, number one cylinder here. I'm gonna stick my air blower down in the bore and give it just a quick little burst of air to blow any debris out of that hole before I pull that plug out because I don't want any dirt falling down inside my cylinder head. Now what we're gonna use here to remove them, I have this uh, double swivel Mac um, spark plug socket. And I should be able to get by with using this on the first cylinders, but toward the back, I may have to use something different. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this spark plug. Okay, friends, there is our first spark plug removed. And it definitely looked like it needed a set of plugs. This vehicle had about 80,000 miles on these. Now with our brand new spark plug, I'm gonna go ahead and place it in our tool here and feed it back down inside the bore. And we wanna make sure that we always start the spark plugs by hand, just to make sure we don't wanna cross thread anything. Now once the spark plug is seated, you just wanna put a little tug on it just to kind of tighten it up and seat it, and you don't have to go crazy on it. Want to make it easy for the next guy to get them out. Okay, as we replace these plugs, I'm gonna go ahead and stick our coil packs back in place. So we're gonna go ahead and push number one coil pack back down in place. And then we will get our bolt and start that and snug it down and plug in our connector and continue on with the next spark plug. Okay, friends, hey, we got all the plugs replaced on the uh, passenger side rail over here, and I want to show you something. I was able to use the double swivel on the first three going back, but the back one is in a pretty tight spot. And what I used here, this is a tool that you may not have in your toolbox. This is actually an old Nissan factory tool that used to come with the Pathfinders and the Infinity QX4s to remove the back spark plug on the 3.3 liter, I do believe. And this actually worked out pretty good. I was able to slide it back there and then use this little dewey right here, you know, to actually break it loose and kept working with it till I could get it where I could spin it out. I installed the new one with that too. Now, if you don't have that tool, uh, you may be able to get by with a, this is a tool that I made a long time ago. It's basically just a spark plug socket with an extension welded to it, okay? And you can probably, with a six inch extension, so you could probably use something like that as well. And of course they make spark plug sockets that are about six inches long. That would probably work perfect. But just wanted to tell you about that. We're gonna move on over to the driver's side and finish this thing up. Okay friends, hey, we just finished up doing this uh, driver's side, okay? We had a little bit of, a couple issues on this side. We actually had two spark plugs that actually broke off. Um, I'll show them to you here in just a moment. A couple other things that we had to take loose during our um, repair, we had number six and number seven cylinder, which is the two middle ones that actually broke. We had to end up taking an inch and a quarter wrench and uh, pulling off, bring the camera over here, I'll show them what we're talking about. Had to end up removing our EGR pipe here where we could get a straight on shot with our easy out to remove that. We had to end up pulling these two DPFE uh, hoses off of here. I've already reattached those and we're getting ready to button everything else back up. I won't bother filming that. It's just gonna be the exact opposite of how we took the air intake tube and all that stuff off of here. But let's go on over to the uh, workbench. Okay, friends, real quick, I wanted to kind of show you all the tools that we used today. We ended up using a few more than we uh, uh, planned on because we had the two broke spark plugs. But anyway, you'll need a couple different ratchets, maybe half inch drive, uh, three eighths drive, quarter inch drive, um, and like I showed you before, this double swivel, I was actually able to use that on every uh, cylinder except for number four cylinder, which is on the driver's side at the far rear. And as I showed you, I used this old Nissan tool for that, but you can also use a regular spark plug socket and extension like we have right here. 
And if you got one that's welded together, that makes it a little bit easier, or you can actually buy, buy sockets like that. Um, here's our plugs that come out of here. And if you look right here, here's the two that broke. And what happened was it actually broke between right here and where the plug goes together here. So it left this part down in the cylinder. So what we did, we ended up using a um, easy out kit here. And we found these that have the four corners on them and they work real well. We uh, have a square drive socket on here. We had a couple extensions and we stuck it down into the bore and tapped it with a hammer and was actually able to back these out. I didn't bother filming all that because I didn't want y'all to hear all the curse words today. But anyway, we got it all done. Um, and I will tell you this, I'm going to bring the camera back around so the good folks can see my face when I say this. <laughs> if you are, depending on your skill level, you may or may not want to tackle this yourself. I do this type of work every day and I can tell you this is a little bit aggravating, okay? Especially when you have spark plugs that actually break on you. So you may want to highly consider taking it to a professional uh, instead of attempting it yourself. Anyway, I thank you for watching the video today. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell a few friends about us, and we'll see you next time. Take care.